Welcome to Create Your Vibrant Life podcast, episode number 29. Are you silencing your dreams? This is your host, Padma Ali. And today we're going to be talking about how we acquire beliefs very subtly as it, as children and how that plays a role in the life that we create in our adult life. It's really going to be mind blowing when you pay attention to this. So listen up, friends. Welcome to the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. If you are the type of person who is a visionary, who wants more from life, who has high dreams and aspirations, wants to evolve spiritually and impact the world, and in the meantime, have time and energy to do the things that are important to you, then whatever you do, tune into this podcast every week. I'm your host, Padma Ali. I help stressed out overachievers find clarity and awaken to their highest potential using my unique NEW, New You Blueprint. I combine neuropsychology, energy healing, and wisdom to create long-lasting changes, and that's what I bring to you in this podcast. I've had a successful career in the field of psychology for over 20 plus years, along with extensive training and experience in ancient healing practices, which I now bring to my coaching work with my clients. And that's what inspired me to do this podcast, to bring this knowledge and wisdom to the world. So I'm incredibly grateful for you to be a part of this journey with me, and I'm so excited to serve you. So welcome. All right, all right. So are you silencing your dreams is the topic of today. I was watching my three-year-old participate in virtual school. And the first thing that the teacher says is she picks up a card and she says, okay, we're going to be talking about rules. And she picks up a card which shows sit still. And then the second one she picks up says be quiet. Now, I want to make this super clear. This has got nothing to do with teachers or school. This is about what we have been programmed as a society and the subtle messages that we get from when we are children because there's an expectation to be, to conform to rules, right? Now, my three-year-old, <laughs> the best way to describe her is like if, if she could, <laughs> she sat the entire time just staring at the, <laughs> the computer screen from the side of her eyes saying, I'm not taking this BS. But that's my kid. And I have to work with who she is. And from what I was told, I was like that too, when I was a child, only that I um, tried very best to fit into the clothes that I was supposed to wear, rather than what I might my, my true nature was. Anyways, but here's the bottom line. This is how we indoctrinate children. And this is how we've been indoctrinated. Follow rules, stand in line, don't move, be quiet. We never take into account individuality, do we? And we're expected to fit into a mold. And then for the next freaking 30, 40, 50 years struggle with, I don't know how to break free of this mold. I don't like this mold. I don't know what to do with it. I'm unhappy. I don't know what to do. I'm going to either do rebellious things or just do what I'm expected and then wake up one day and say, what has happened to my life? How many of you can relate to that? So let me ask you this. How much are you living your life right now by circumstances? I don't have enough. My relationship is not what I like. I can't leave. I can't do this. I can't create the business that I've been wanting so for so long. I can't ask for that promotion. I can't get make the money that I want. How many of you are still living your life by circumstances? That is circumstances. That's not living from possibilities, but it's not you. Here's what I want you to really pay attention to. This is not you. This is how you've been indoctrinated to think. This is how it is so subtle. Some of these beliefs are so subtle. You will be amazed and surprised to see how subtle these impressions are and how, the impact that they leave in our mind. So let me ask you this again. Has innovation ever happened by following what is just possible? 
Has innovation ever happened by that? What if the Wright brothers said flying is not possible? Flying is impossible. We, where would we be as a race? What if like people just sat around and said, "Oh, that's not possible," and they did, by the way, and they didn't. They didn't take that into account. They just went with what was possible. They did not live from circumstances. Or, you know, that person. Oh my God, I'm totally blanking out the name who discovered electricity. How? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, what was his name? Edison. Oh my God, Edison. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Thomas Elva Edison, who invented electricity. What if he gave that up because people thought he was crazy? People thought that wasn't possible. Again, would innovation have ever happened if people stuck to circumstances? Now I'm going to invite you to get out your journal and start writing answers to these questions. It's really vital because when you can pay attention to this and really bring the unconscious to the conscious, you'll be amazed at what's possible for you. I'm going to invite you to sit with this this first question. How many unconscious beliefs are you carrying still in your life? Now, if you don't know the answer to that, just look in the mirror. If you don't like what you see, I'm not talking about your physical appearance, by the way. I'm talking about what you, whether you like your life, the way your life is situated, your, your health, your wealth situation, your relationship, your parenting, whether you like any of these things or not. If you don't like them, then most likely you are carrying unconscious beliefs that are holding you back. You see, you know, when you, when we all were growing up, right? And even now, like you're expected to follow rules. And then you wonder why you're not progressing or very, why you're not where you want to be. If you've always followed rules and never stepped outside the box, why are you surprised that your life is where it is? Now, the second question I'm going to ask you is, what beliefs do you have to let go of? What do you have to shed right now? You know, when my son, I finally broke him out of this habit. After he started going to school, he would ask permission to go to the bathroom. Yeah, he would ask permission. Be like, Mama, can I go to the bathroom? I'm like, dude, you don't have to ask me permission to go to the bathroom. Just go. And so I finally broke him out of the habit of asking permission. But it starts there, right? Like even in school, like you have to raise your hand to ask a question. You have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. You have to raise your hand for everything. I get it. Guys, this is not, I'm not bashing schools. I'm not bashing any of that. But I, I am inviting us as a society as it, it starts with you personally first, right? Like where, where are we holding ourselves back because of these rules? I get it. We need rules to have the society function in a most, in, in the most efficient way possible. I get it. But are these rules working? Are these rules not working? And before we change the society and all that, you have to start with you first. So asking yourself, are you adhering to rules that are no longer serving you? If you grew up that way where you've asked permission to go to the bathroom, I'm just making a joke, but asking permission, where else in your life are you asking permission? Are you asking permission to wear the clothes that you want to wear? Are you asking permission to create the business that you want to create? Are you asking permission for, is this, does this look, this is whatever that you're asking permission for? Are you asking permission in your life? So these rules keep us trapped, don't they? The hardest things about these rules are rules that we are not even aware of. They're so subtle. Okay, if you have kids, please make sure that either you have your headphone headset on for what I'm going to share next, or you can switch this back on when you don't have kids around. <laughs> so um, not this this part of it, but I'm going to share something else, which is really funny, but I don't know if it's appropriate for kids. I don't think it's appropriate for kids. This one is not. So my So when I was growing up, I was often told as a society, you know, I grew up in India, which is pretty patriarchal and conservative. And I was growing up. I have no idea how it is right now because I haven't lived there for the last, I don't know, two, 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 two and a half decades. Anyways, when I was growing up, 
I was told that sex was bad. Sex was not okay, especially if you're not married. Sex was not okay. And I've heard things like, oh, you, you know, if you, if you are interested in a boy or if you get sexually involved with a boy, like it's not the boy who's going to be in question, but your integrity, your whatever is going to be, you, you are going to be uh, ostracized. This was the subtle messages I got, both overt and covert. It would happen in movies. If you ever watched old Bollywood movies, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like made out to be this big deal in the past. And I'm not talking about right now. Now, how does one go from that to suddenly become all explore, explore, exploratory in sex? I can't even say the word properly. Exploratory, explorative. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's tripping over my words today. Explorative in sex. Now, when you've gotten messages like that, how do you go from that to this? So when you've gotten messages like sex is bad, right? It's very subtle. It's never like, you know, you may or may not have grown up like that. But if you've gotten messages like that, how do you shift that? I know it's such a random example, but these are these are the ways I'm inviting you to start looking at your life, like looking at all aspects of your life, not just one, like not just your work or your money or like whatever you're dealing with right now. Like look at all aspects of your life. Another talking about random example. This is the piece that if you have kids, please ask them to <laughs> do something else before you listen to this. <laughs> and don't quote me on this. But what I read was apparently in Singapore, there's a law or there's a rule or something like that, that oral sex is illegal unless it's used in the form of foreplay. <laughs> Try enforcing that, people. How do you enforce that? <laughs> but apparently it's a rule or a law or something of that kind. I know since I was talking about sex, I was like, I just I, I know this information so randomly that I thought of just sharing that here. That's so random, guys. So, so random. But it is, I'm talking about BS rules like this. Anyways, let's get back on topic. <laughs> oh, my invitation to you is to see where in your life are you holding back? What messages might you have received about the place where you know you want more, but you aren't doing that and you are holding yourself back, are you still following those rules or beliefs or whatever was told to you? Let me give you some concrete examples, okay? So let's talk about work. Did you get a message when you were growing up of not questioning authority? Like, I am sure you can relate to this. Many of us, Many of you, many, many, many of us have received this message. You ask a question when you're a kid and, and the answer and then and then the something some a parent or somebody in authority figure says, yes, um, not yes. They don't answer that or, or they. OK, I'm tripping over my words. Let me backtrack. You are expected to do something and you don't want to do it and you ask why. The answer is because I said so. Have you, how many of us have heard that question, that answer? Because I said so. And that's how we get the message that questioning authority is not okay. Do you still do that in your work situation? Or you've gotten messages like, um, it's just that way. You have to do it because it's just that way. And notice whether you do that to your own kids or not. Like when I was growing up, this is so funny. Like I wasn't allowed to cut my hair because girls don't cut their hair. And I always wanted short hair, always. And the message I was always given, like, no, you don't cut your hair. Why? Because I said so. Because that's what it is. Because girls don't cut their hair. That's it. Okay. <laughs> now my daughter, now I have short hair, as you probably have seen. But my daughter, my three-year-old is like, I want to grow my hair. I want to grow it really, 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 really long. <laughs> So it's interesting, right? Like when you don't have rules or when you don't have, when you're not trying to be, to conform somebody, your children to a particular mold, then they get to be who they are. They get to express their needs and express themselves. And, and these beliefs are so subtle. 
do you take care of other people's needs first? Right? That's also something that you might have been told. Like I was always told, again, like culturally, you always take it's a we society, you take care of other people first, you always put other people's needs first. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's really good to give. I'm, I'm a giver. I'm a very big giver. But at the expense of my own needs, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. And that's what I'm inviting you to start looking at. Do you take care of other people's needs at your own expense? Now, if you're a leader, right, you didn't get to that leadership role by sticking to your lane and just doing what was told to you or what was possible, did you? Absolutely not. You thought outside the box. You defied the odds. Now, my question is, how can you bring that vital piece of thinking outside the box, not not just conforming to rules and what was what's possible to your employees, to your team, to your kids? How can you bring that to people around you to create expansion? Encourage people to think outside the box. Encourage people and your kids to to ask questions, to get curious. When we bring curiosity to a situation, think about the amount of expansion that happens. How can you inspire them, right? How can you inspire them to step outside their own box, outside the invisible shackles that have held them back? How can you do that? As a leader, it's your obligation. Obligation is not the right word. It's, it's, it's necessary that you do that because you can have that impact on people. And you may or may not have fully consider, con- considered the impact of being stuck in this invisible box. Imagine being stuck in that invisible for a year, invisible box for a year, for 10 years, for 20 years. And that's how we all live our life, don't we? That's, that's how most people, I should not say we, most, m- most people or many people live in that invisible box for most of their life. Now imagine what would be possible what life would look like if you stopped holding yourself back because of some invisible limiting belief that has been stored in your unconscious mind, in your subconscious mind? What would your life look like? Like I've said before, right, I grew up in India in the 70s and the 80s. It's a pretty, it was a pretty patriarchal society. I think it still is, but at that time it was really patriarchal. And my father was thought outside the box. He's not no longer on this planet, but he really thought outside the box. He allowed or he was he was very progressive in his thinking. And he taught me and my sister were just we were just two girls, first of all, girls, right? Like, you know, really he, he really taught us to be independent. He taught us to ride um, you know, those two wheelers, scooters, the, you know, like they they look like mopeds, like motorcycles. They look like that, but he taught us to ride that. He taught us how to drive cars. He, he really encouraged us to be independent and to think independently. And what if my dad thought, Oh, you need to just get married off. My mom was married off when she was 17, right? Like it was. And an arranged marriage and like what if he what if he thought like that what if that's how he was think he thought I don't know where I would be I would probably not be where I am today that's another thing that I really triggered him a lot because I thought more outside the box than <laughs> he encouraged me so I thought outside the box and it it also pushed his buttons of like oh my because I was a rebel for most of my life I rebelled against everything and so it triggered him even though that's what he wanted it was it was interesting to watch that now you know as an adult like seeing that how conflicted that might have been for him he wanted more but when it was happening it was like oh my god like this is happening who's this girl why why is she pushing all my buttons so it's it's our responsibility as parents to allow our children to think outside the box it's really vital especially for the for for the future, right? And that's where I'm also inviting you all to think like what if in schools we didn't teach our children to ask permission but just to be curious. Yes, you need certain rules to keep the the 
the class harmony, but what if we thought outside the box and ask and had them ask ask get curious? Wouldn't that foster confidence versus doubting yourself? Alvin Toffler um, ta- said he he said this quote. It's really amazing. You might have already heard this, but it's really incredible. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those that learn, unlearn, and relearn. Let me read it to you again. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who learn, unlearn, and relearn. We truly have to unlearn those old beliefs and patterns that no longer serve us. And I'm inviting you to to totally look at that very carefully. What beliefs are no longer serving you? Can you let it go? Even if it means climbing upstream for a little bit, even if it means not conforming to what's expected of you, even if it means that you are are going against something that you've done all your life. Where will you be? And that's where I'm going to leave you with today. Like this is when you can start to truly get this, that I, that these are just unconscious rules and beliefs that I have lived my entire life with. And it's time to let them go. Because when you do, imagine what's possible. Imagine what your life would look like if you did not conform to rules. Think Edison. Think the Wright brothers. I mean, if you want current day, current day leaders, think Elon Musk. What if they just said, no, I can't do this. Steve Jobs. What is possible? Richard Branson. I can quote Oprah Winfrey. Think about it, guys. Like, think about it. They all broke rules. They all said, nope, I am not living in my circumstances. I'm going to think about what's possible. And that's my invitation to you. Please, please start to look at your life closely. Start to look at how you're parenting. Start to look at how you're leading people in your life. Start to look at what's possible for you. I'm so glad you're here. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you found value, please share this podcast, subscribe to it, ask other people to subscribe and listen and leave reviews, please, because that will really mean a lot to me, first of all. And secondly, it will help others reach. It helped me reach others. And I know you like helping people. So this is really going to help reach others. And it's also a form of reciprocity because It's my energy I'm putting into this. And when you reciprocate, it's like it's this beautiful exchange of energy between us. And the reciprocation is just writing a two minute, two second, five, one minute. It'll take you one minute to write a review. So I'm inviting you to do that. And thank you so much for being a part of this journey and sending you all so much love and light and peace.